Close your eyes and watch your breath. This is a skill. You can watch your breath for a few seconds, that doesn't take much skill, but to watch it for long periods of time does take skill. So when the breath goes in, know it's going in. When it goes out, know it's going out. And just keep at it, each breath coming in, each breath going out. This requires that you develop mindfulness to remember what you're going to do. In this case, to remember to stay with the breath. And alertness to know what you're actually doing. And then there's ardency. You want to do it well. You want to do it as a skill. If you find that the mind is slipping off, you've got to find some way to bring it back. If it slips off again, you bring it back again. Try to make the breath as comfortable as you can. So you'd be more likely to want to come back. Try long breathing, short breathing, deep, shallow, heavy, light. See what's just right for the body right now. Everything the Buddha teaches is a skill. Even simple things like being generous, being virtuous, these are skills. Learning how to get along with one another, these are skills. When you try to be generous, you want to look at your motive. Why are you, being, why are you giving to this person? And why are you choosing that person to give to? And what are you giving? Is it something you're giving just because you want to show off, or because it's actually going to meet that person's needs? And is this the right time for that? Is it the right person for that? You want to look at this very carefully, all from all angles that you're giving. Even when you give anything at all, even as the Buddha said, even if you take leftover food into a puddle of water for the crows to drink or the crows to eat, that's meritorious. But you get more merit if you are more careful about looking at yourself, your motivation, looking at the recipient. What, the, what is this person going to do with what you're going to give them? And looking at the actual gift. The same with the precepts. You have to learn how to have some skill in observing them. There are times when you might want to say a little white lie, but then you realize, okay, if I say anything at all that's not really true, then my precept is broken. So that puts up a net. So you have to learn how to play with the net instead of without the net. And that way you develop your discernment. Learning how to get along with one another, that also requires skill. You don't just do what you feel like doing. You have to think about, when I act, what are the results going to be? What is, how is this going to impact the people around me? And then try to have the best kind of impact that you can think of. The Buddha gives four things to think about. One, to be generous with the people around you. In other words, you have something, share it with them. Don't just keep it for yourself. Secondly, be very careful about what you say, how you say things to the people around you. The Buddha says you have to speak in a way that's soothing, shows respect for the other person. Even when you have to criticize the other person, show that you're doing it with respect. You don't do it with contempt, because that destroys the relationship. And then when you help the person, help them in a way that really is in line with their needs. In other words, you don't do it just to show off again. You do it because you say, well, this person really needs this. This is something I have I can do to help. You give your time, you give your knowledge, you give your forgiveness. All of this helps create a a bond, as the Buddha says, a bond of friendship. And then finally, there's consistency. The way you act in front of that person is the same way you act behind that person's back. And the way you act behind the person's back is the same way you act in front of them. And you've helped them in the past, you want to continue helping them on consistently. This way you develop a sense of harmony in the group, so we all live together happily. So there's a skill to everything you want to do in, in order to find happiness. For the most part, we approach happiness simply doing what we want to do, thinking that's going to make us happy. But as the Buddha said, if you take some care about how you're going to search for happiness, then you find that the happiness gets multiplied many times over. Approach it as a skill, something you can learn from. It's like cooking. You try something and it doesn't work quite work, okay, figure out what to change so the next time around it does taste good. Now, if it doesn't taste good the second time, you try it, something new the third time. Keep at it. Begin to notice, okay, when I do this, there's a, it comes out well. When I do that, it doesn't come out well. Take that as a skill. Same way when you're getting along with other people. You find if you just do what you want, it's not going to work. You have to figure out, okay, what's going to work in this particular case? So there does come happiness in living with other people, because we all have our defilements. And if we just keep our defilements running up against each other, as John Lee said, it's like going around with your wires exposed. You've got the current running, your anger's running, they've got theirs running, as soon as you meet them there's a, there's a short, and everything, everything collapses. But if you learn how to protect your wires, don't go around with your wires exposed. And learn how to approach your relationships with other people as a skill. You'll find that your happiness is something that becomes solid, it becomes something you can begin to depend on.
because you yourself become a person you can depend on. Why is that? Because you're taking the qualities of the Buddha and you're bringing them into your own behavior. That's what it means when we say we take refuge in the Buddha. We've got a good example to follow, an example that we can trust. And then we follow that example, we find we develop a happiness we can trust too. So try to approach your happiness as a skill, not just as something hit or miss that you do what you want to do it, when you want to do it. You do it things when it's going to give the best results, and you do the things that do give the best results. That's how your happiness becomes secure. <laughs>